But anyway, let's, uh, before we get started, let's go for the Lord's Prayer. and minister and move, Father God. You know the situations. You know the circumstances, Father God. And Lord, we just ask that your mighty hand, Father God, move mightily in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we just thank you. We honor you. We ask your anointing upon this service tonight, Father God. Just touch and minister and move upon your people tonight, Lord God, Jesus. We just invite your sweet Holy Spirit into this place tonight, Father Lord, we invite you in tonight, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, we open our arms and we open our hearts, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give 
has to do, Amen. do in our lives. It's, and yes. He is worthy Amen. to do it. I was uh, sitting Amen. yesterday, I was driving somewhere, and all of a sudden, um, I just heard his voice and say, every breath that he puts out can make a miracle. I got excited. Amen. Woo, I like Amen. miracles. Amen. And the greatest miracle in the world was when he saved me. That's right. Amen. Amen. And salvation is the greatest miracle yes. ever. And you know, uh, the, the Lord's good. Tiara, would you come and take up the tithes and offering? Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Father God, we love you tonight and we yes. praise your holy name. We thank you for the joy of our salvation. We thank you that you have given us one more day. And Lord, let us win souls for you tonight, oh God. And glory to you and glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah to you, Lord. And we thank you this day. Amen.
you would tonight, turn your Bibles to Psalm 62. We're going to look at verses 5 through 8 tonight. Psalm 62, 5 through 8. The word of the Lord says this, it says, My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Verse 8, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Salah. Father God, I thank you. I bless you. I honor you tonight. Lord, help your servant tonight, Lord God, speak the words that need to be spoken. Lord, help us to receive, each and every one of us, receive what you have for us, Lord God. Lord, give us our ears to hear and a heart to receive, Lord God, Jesus, your words. Lord, Father God, may we just bless you and praise you and honor you tonight, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. Tonight I want to minister just for a little bit on God is our refuge. I was drawn to, as I was praying through the week and just talking to the Lord and asking what to minister tonight, he said, people need to know that I am a refuge. Amen. And I was particularly drawn to verse 8 because it says, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. What is a refuge? According to Webster's Dictionary, refuge is a shelter or protection from danger or distress. It's a place that provides shelter or protection and also something to which one has recourse in difficulty. You know, I was thinking that, you know, in the physical sense that when we talk about refuges, we we often talk about our homes. We often talk about how that's a place that we go when we, like, say there's a storm outside and we want to go home. We don't want to be stuck out in the storm. You don't want to be at the grocery store where all the craziness is. You don't want to be outside somewhere unprotected. I I was recalling in my mind, I was like, man, some of the craziness that I've been through in my life. I remember one time when uh, we were in the other church and uh, they were reporting a tornado in the area and I don't know whose ideal it was or whose thinking it was. I really don't know. I was a young kid. But they, we went over to the post office to hide or to be safe. And I remember thinking as a kid, seeing all that glass in the front windows. I'm like, man, this can't be very safe. You know, a tornado comes, it's whipping winds, and it's washing, and it's pushing, and the winds are going back and forth, and they'll break a window faster than anything. And I'm just, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm just like, oh my goodness, I'm like, this does not feel very safe. Because when we think about a place of refuge or a place uh, that we can dwell in, we, take, we think about safety. Yes, we, do. we think about protection. Yes. We think about peace. Uh-huh. Amen. We think about being able to overcome. Those are some of the things we think about. But, you know, have you ever just been in a 
situation that you just did not feel safe. Amen. You did not feel secure. Amen. Amen. But God is a place. He is our refuge. Yes, he is. We can go to God and we can stay in God's presence tonight and be Amen. safe from all harm. Hallelujah. We can be at peace when everyone else is going crazy. That's right. Amen. You know, I, I, I go back to when COVID first started and everybody was making their run on the groceries and my wife and I, we didn't do nothing. We just went to the store whenever we could. And, and, and you know, yeah, there wasn't very much on the shelves, but you know what? And we didn't get exactly everything we wanted, but, you know, we never went hungry and we never did without. We never panicked by. We never went out and hoarded toilet paper, hallelujah, but we were always provided for, hallelujah. Amen. You know, when you trust in God, when you place your trust, and here's really where the refuge of God anchors, it's, it's, it's through our faith that we trust and believe God that whenever we're going through the problems and when we're going through the situations and when we're going through the circumstances, that we're going to be safe and we're going to be kept through that storm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Psalms 91, 1 through 16. This is a great depiction of the safety we have as we dwell in the secret place or in his presence. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. See, really, I, I want to stop there because most of the time we, when we get ourselves in trouble, you know why a lot of times harm comes to us and, and sometimes we get ourselves in mess because we, we don't trust God enough. We step out of that safety zone because we trust in ourselves or we trust in our own might and our own power more than we trust in God. Yes. Amen. Say amen or with me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. My God in whom him I will trust. Yes. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. Yes, you will. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Yes. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and you see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. Yeah. Listen to what he says in his word. No evil shall befall Amen. you. Jesus. Nor shall any plague yeah. come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. When you make God your high place, when you make him your refuge. There's no evil that shall befall you, and there's no plague that can come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. So people need to take this to heart tonight because this is a promise in the Word of God. And, you know, I know there's people that are still scared of color, but I'm not scared one bit because I understand that as long as I place my trust in God, as long as I put my faith in Him, hallelujah, none of that stuff is going to come near unto us, hallelujah. For he shall give his angels charge over you yes, he will. to keep you in all your ways. Amen. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Hallelujah. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon us. Therefore, I 
will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is God talking to us this morning. He's always with us. He's there to hear us. He's there to listen to us. He's there through all our trials. He's there through. But this is only if we keep him as our refuge. Hallelujah. This is when we dwell in that secret place. That place where only God can get to us. Hallelujah. Nothing else around us can get to us. Amen. But we will, if we will just trust in the Lord with all our heart yes. and lean not unto our own understanding yes. and in all our ways acknowledge him Hallelujah. and trust him he shall direct our path Hallelujah. Yes. he'll direct us he'll guide us he'll lead us and we just trust in him God said that if there's any among you that like wisdom ask God who gives abundantly and he shall grant you wisdom. Hallelujah. Yes. I, I don't know about you, but I oftentimes, I, many, many times, I ask God, I say, God, give me wisdom. Because I understand the gravity of my decisions. They don't just, you know, here's what you got to understand about your decisions. They don't just affect you. Oh, amen. Right. Amen. They don't just affect you. Something that our leaders in this country need to understand. Their decisions don't just affect them. Come on. Yeah. They affect every living person in this society. Your decisions, they affect everyone around you. In inadvertently and overtly, they affect them. That's why I don't make decisions hastily or or without proper knowledge or thinking because I, I like to analyze and, and look and, and, and keep, I like to try to get all the information that I can before I make a decision. Because I want to make sure that whatever decision that I'm making, that not only is it the right decision, but it's the decision that God wants me to make because that's what he wants to keep me in. You know, I was looking at this and I was reminded of Ephesians 6.16 and it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, yes. with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yes, amen. See, this goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier. Many times we get ourselves in trouble and we get hurt and we get wounded. We get wounded by the fiery darts because we don't stay behind the protection of the shield of faith, which is our abundantly our trust in the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. It's, our, it's our belief that says, you know what? I, I know what everything looks like. I know what everything appears like, but you know what? I, I'm going to decide whether they're tr looking in fear or looking in worry or looking in, in question that I'm going to look, as the Bible says over and over, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk by what God calls those things to be, just like Abraham did. He said he called those things which are not as though they should be. In other words, we need to speak things into existence. Hallelujah. We need to call things by the things which God has called them, not by what the world has called them, not by what our senators and Republicans and Democrats and liberals have called them, but we need to call them by the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Good stuff. Because when we dwell in that secret place, when we dwell in that faith, when we dwell in that trust, Amen. we're protected. We're protected from the fiery darts that the enemy's trying 
trying to pierce us with and trying to destroy us with and trying to hurt us with. I, I can't tell you tonight how many Christians I have seen fall by the wayside because they have gotten hurt, not just by people in the world, but people of the church because they've said things that they shouldn't have said. They've done things that they shouldn't have done, hallelujah. But it's when you see, why is that? Because they failed to stay behind the protective armor of God that he's given us. And it's, they failed to stay behind the shield of faith tonight. Must stay in the refuge. Yes, hallelujah. We must believe God is our refuge. You know, I don't know about you, but when I know a storm's going, I remember this one time, I think it was in Oklahoma, that's when I was young, and there was a tornado reported in. I remember them taking us in the cellar for protection. I don't, I don't remember where it was at. I just remember it briefly. But that's the same thing we can do with God. Yes, amen. When the storms and the winds and the waves get rough and when life gets turbulent, which we all know that life can get turbulent, we all know that our country can see turbulent times. You know, I, I've been hearing so much gloom and doom prophecy on our church, on, on our country lately, and quite frankly, I'm fed up with it. Amen. Because you know what? You can prophesy and you can preach judgment all you want. But let me tell you something. According to this holy word, yes. judgment begins in the house of God. It begins with you and me. It doesn't begin with the White House. It begins in the hearts and the lives of God's people. And if you want to prophesy and if you want to preach damnation and doom and gloom to our country, then it's going to start with you. Hallelujah. So tired of it. I'm sorry, I got a bigger God than That's President true. Biden. Amen. He, he put him in power and God can take him out. I, I don't care what you think about the election. The Bible is very clear in Romans 13. I don't care what you think. I care about what the Word says. The Bible says that God puts people in authority. God puts people in power. And it's only him that puts them in place. Do I agree with President Biden? No, I do not. Absolutely not. But I do pray for him because that's what the Word of God says. Amen. 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 Pray for Nancy Pelosi, too. Yeah, pray, for pray that God saves them. That's it. Amen. They're, they're not too far for God's salvation. Change it all right there, would you? That wasn't even part of my message. I just get so sick of some of this stuff. It's just like it's being shoved and shoved and shoved and shoved down our throats until we don't know the truth and we don't know what's going on. We don't know the right from the left. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. And all we got to do is open God's word. When God's word tells us exactly what's going on, right? There's no, there's no question in my mind where we're at as a country. Let me tell you where we're at as a country. We're seeing the spirit of the Antichrist coming in and he's bringing in his his, his, his house, hallelujah. He's bringing in the mark of the beast. He's bringing in the cashes. I was in a restaurant today that just said, hey, 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 you come in here. We don't accept anything but electronic or contactless payments. One world order is coming to pass. Sure is, absolutely. Right before our very eyes, and people can't see it. People don't see it. But we need to understand the only way that we're going to be sheltered, the only way that we're going to be secure as God's people. Listen to me tonight. 
the only way that we're going to get through this mess because I believe Christ is coming soon. You know, say what you want to say. Maybe you don't believe, but you know, maybe you're a mid rapture person. Well, that's okay. You believe that if you want because half of the earth will be destroyed at that time. But I believe what the Word of God says. And the Word of God teaches, and it says that we're, we believe, as an, and even in the church of God as a whole, as pre trib rapture. That's what we believe. If, if you don't believe me, go research it for yourself. But the only way we're going to make it through this mess, the only way we're going to be able to withstand in these last and in, and in, 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 in time day is if we're sheltered in the arms of God. As Brother Rocco, I was reminded of that song today, in the shelter of the God. If we're sheltered in his arms, no harm shall befall me. Hallelujah. I, you know, God has taken care of me more times than I can count. Hallelujah. He's provided food when I didn't have money to buy. He's provided shelter when I didn't have money to buy. He's provided cars when I didn't have money to buy. God's always taking care of his people. But if you want to be a worry wart and a fear monger, you go ahead and right, knock yourself out because all harm is going to come to you. I know that's hard, but it's true. I know it's hard, but when we step outside of God's statutes, when we step outside of God's commandments, there is a price, and it is a steep price to pay. I know that's not popular preaching anymore, but I don't really care about popular anymore. This world needs truth. Because only the truth is going to set us free. That's right. We need a firm foundation. And the only truth that I really know to be true and factual is the truth in this word of God. The fact checkers can find fact check it all they want. But I got I got news for them. There's not only a God that says that this word is inspired, that it's God breathed, and that every word is spoken by him. But not only is there that, but science backs it up. So, and, uh, uh, archaeological backs it up. Uh, history backs it up. There's evidence all around us that backs this word of God. So you tell me what's truth. I tell you what's truth. The truth is the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. to getting beyond the troublesome times is making God our refuge. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. I don't, I don't really care if I look like a fool. Fool for Jesus. I really don't care. If I look crazy, they can call me what they want. They can cut me a nutball. That's okay. I'm a nutball for Jesus. Right. And if you don't like it, there's the door. Because I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to change my stance. I've come, as that old song used to say, I've come too far on my journey now. I'm not planning to turn back. I'm not planning to turn around. Because I've already found the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way to God. Hallelujah. There is no other peace. There is no other hope other than Jesus. Hallelujah. I wasn't planning on saying any of that. Yeah, that's it. You need to. 
can trust him. You know, in our society, it's even sad to say this, this is in the churches too, but you don't know you don't know who you can and can't trust anymore. So many people swindling and scheming and conniving and lying to your face and telling you things and not doing them and all that. And you just don't know who you can believe and who you can't believe and who you can trust and who you can depend on. You just don't know. That's the society we live in. Yes, it is. And unfortunately, unfortunately, because that exists in our society, that's gotten people that way towards God. They feel like they can't trust him. They feel like they can't depend on him. They feel like they're, that he's going to let them down or that he's going to ro roll them over and, bet, you know, and do harmful things. But that's not our God. That's right. That's right. That's not our God. You can't trust him. You can't depend on him. You can believe him when you cannot believe anybody else. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. The Lord hasn't revealed that to me. But may God your refuge tonight. Say, God, and even if you have to, repent. Say, God, I'm sorry for not trusting you. I'm sorry for not depending on you like I should. I'm sorry, God, for, for relying on my own strength. Let me tell you something. I'm a very strong man. I like to figure things out. That's what I like to do. Yes, you do. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, sometimes that transcends over to God. I try to figure things out <laughs> instead of trusting God. Uh -huh. Hey, don't don't look at me like I'm alone up here now. <laughs> We all do it. We're strong individuals. We're independent, bless God. So you think. So you think, exactly, Tom. Until you're not. Until you realize that you're not enough. Until you realize that you cannot fight the battle on your own. Good, right. Until you realize that you can't go through this life alone. Right. I, I honestly, you know, after going through some of the stuff I've been through, I, I tell you what, after cancer, oh my goodness, I don't know how in the world people go through stuff like that without Jesus. I don't, I don't know how people go through this life without Jesus. I don't, I, I don't know. I really don't understand. How can you go through life without him? I, I don't know, but I don't want to find out. I, I already lived that life. I already lived that life. And Jesus rescued me from it. And even though I may be stubborn, and even though I may be hard-headed, God still loves me and he takes care of me. Thank you, honey. I won't get any more amen. At least I got that one. Praise the Lord. Uh, stand with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. sheltered in the arms of God tonight. That song's just been going through my head and my spirit all day long. I was sheltered in the arms of God. When the storm clouds rise, they don't worry me because I'm sheltered 
<laughs> You're sheltered, sheltered in, the in the arms of Jesus. You're sheltered in the arms of a living God. Hallelujah. You're sheltered tonight. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be, oh, is me and woe is me. Because you're sheltered in the arms of God tonight. Jesus. Jesus right now, Lord God. Jesus right now, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, I need to shut down the door. Jesus. Oh, Lord God, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Lord Jesus, right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, 
scripture tells us, do not fear what man can do to you. Amen. For only man can touch the body. But be fearful of God. For he can affect the spirit and the soul. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't fear. Don't fear what man can do to you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray over every individual here tonight, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, that you would minister to them, that you would touch them, Lord God, by your might and by your power, Lord God, Jesus. Just strengthen them, encourage them, lift them up, Lord God, Jesus, and help them, Lord God, to make you their refuge, Lord God, Jesus. Help them tonight, Lord God. Help them, Lord God. Put your protective hand over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for it, and we bless you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Don't forget, Sunday morning, 1045, Lord willing, will be back here for Sunday morning service. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yes, the prayer covered. Hallelujah. Yep. God, hallelujah.